respected principal ma'am ms asna nafis vice principal ma'am ms shoma bhattacharya teachers and students hearty good morning to all and a warm welcome to the orientation program for grade 11 and 12 2324 i also welcome all the parents who have joined us online for the orientation program this program intends to familiarize the students and the parents with the school rules and policies including those related to the discipline it is also designed to inform the students about the upcoming examinations cbse guidelines and college admission requirements the program also aims to encourage our students to actively participate in various school events and activities as it contributes to their holistic development even our school mission and vision as well as the objective aims for the same hopefully today's orientation program makes our student more confident and ensures that they have a productive year ahead so moving on i proceed with the first segment of today's orientation program i will be updating you all regarding the behavior policy and the disciplinary guidelines all the students must be neatly dressed for school in a proper school uniform students are strictly not permitted to color their hair girls should tie their hair properly boys must have a short and neat haircut all students must wear well polished black leather shoes students must keep their nails short and should not use the nail paint students are strictly prohibited from bringing mobile if any student is found in possession of any electronic gadget it will be confiscated and will not be returned however the students using metro or taxi can carry the mobile phone with a consent letter signed by the parent in such a case the letter should be submitted to the class teacher and the mobile phone should be submitted daily to the class teacher during the class teacher's period during the examination time if any student is in possession of any of the following it will be considered as unfair means any paper or revision slip or notes mobile phones or smart watch or any other electronic gadget anything written on the any stationary item anything written on the body of the student writing or marking the answers on the question paper receiving or giving any assistance during the exam time the student will be marked zero for the use of unfair means a disciplinary memo will be issued to the student there is no room for any form of bullying students involved in such an activity will face strict disciplinary action students involved in such an activity will not get the letter of recommendation for college admissions all the students are advised to be careful and if they witness any such activity in the school premises please inform your teacher regarding cyber safety keep yourself safe on social media be careful about the security and the privacy as when you are using these platforms personal information and password should be kept confidential be very judicious about what you share on these portals consider all posts as permanent be very careful when you post strong opinion or you share your picture remember internet is permanent whatever you post over there stays forever certain suggestions pc should be placed in a common area in the house students must immediately exit any website which makes them uncomfortable never post any explicit photographs of yours in any situation parents should spend time with the children while exploring these online any online resources moving on to the general rules no student should indulge in any of the following practices damaging school property misbehaving with the teacher or any other student using inappropriate or abusive language next shouting loudly or behaving rudely disobeying instructions from the in charge in the bus fighting in the school premises or in the school bus students must carry their almanac to the school every day students should report in the school timely parents and guardians should not visit their ward or teachers in the classroom any medical appointment for the student should be arranged later in the evening rather than the school during the school hours once a child reports to the school he or she will not be allowed to go home on a half day leave due to illness if a student has to be sent to home 
the school nurse will communicate with the parents in case any student violates the school rules and indulges in any form of indiscipline strict action will be taken against the student a student will be issued a disciplinary memo the student with a disciplinary record will not be entitled for any letter of recommendation for college admission so to students i request you please adhere to the school policies for the next segment i call upon ms kapuri viswas class representative of grade 11 for the further proceedings thank you all thank you rakhi ma'am once again a very good morning to all present here the most familiar global term familiar among the students fraternity is examination exams are an integral part of all educational institutions because it instills discipline and time management life skills gives the ability to stay focused under pressure qualifications that you need in life are only acquired through examinations so today i will be discussing the scheme of examination and promotion criteria in grade 11 academic session 23 24 let us check out the tentative date sheet of examinations in grade 11 23 24 month of may is scheduled for the first term in the month of september from the first week of september to the first week of october we have cycle 1 of weekly test this is followed by half yearly examinations both practical as well as theory month of november we have the cycle 2 of weekly test which will commence from the second week of november to the second week of december after the winter vacation we have the revision test scheduled in the month of january followed by the annual practical examination month of february is totally dedicated to annual examination theory and in the month of march the new session for grade 12 2425 batch begins let us now check out the timeline of examinations in grade 11 first term examination scheduled from 22nd may to 31st may general studies examination 5th of june half yearly practical examination from 5th october to 11th october half yearly examination theory from 15th october to 24th october revision test in the month of january from 7th january to 6th annual general studies examination on 27th november 2023 annual practical examination will be scheduled after the revision exam and it will be conducted from 17th january to 24th january 2024 annual examination theory from 7th february to 22nd february results will be declared online on 3rd march 2024 and the new session for class 12 2425 batch will begin from 7th of march let us now check out the important informations regarding examinations students must pass both in theory as well as in practical but practical marks will not be considered for promotion to grade 12 weekly test marks will be updated on the school website after every cycle and can be viewed online retest will not be conducted in any case average marks will be awarded to students who are on duty and have or have approved medical leave let us now check out the promotion criteria a student should score 33% marks both in theory as well as in practical examination students scoring 33% marks in aggregate and a minimum of 33% in all subjects qualify for promotion to grade 12 attendance is mandatory for all examinations students found using ufm or unfair means will be marked zero in that particular subject and no retest will be conducted in that case moreover these students will also not be eligible for any academic awards or school appointments hard work plus dreams plus dedication equal to success 
GPS Modern Indian School recognizes and rewards those who strive academically as we believe that great achievement is only possible with persistent efforts. The different categories of awards for honoring students with academic excellence in grade 11 are as follows. Scholar badge awarded to students of grade 11 provided they secure a minimum of 85 percentage mark in aggregate and a minimum of 85 percentage in all subjects. We also award students with 100% attendance badge because we believe that if a student is regular, the student has fewer discipline issues and learn better. We also have the proficiency award given to the students who secure the highest marks in a particular subject and have appeared in all examinations. The next set of academic awards are blue blazer, blue tie, gold medal, silver medal and special awards. DPS Modern Indian School envisions holistic development of students. So, a panel of teachers select the best all-rounder on the basis of academics, co-curricular, literary and social awareness, games, sports, as well as personality traits. In conclusion, I would like to say that all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So, believe in yourself. Work persistently and achieve with all your might. You are the only person capable of bettering yourself and achieving your goals. With this, I invite Mr. Siddharth Reshta, class rep of grade 12 for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Kakoli ma'am. Good fortune happens only when opportunities are backed by proper, proper planning. Good morning to one and all. I am here to shed light on scheme of examination for class 12 for the academic year 2023-24. I hope our students plan their studies accordingly and come out with flying color. First, I will discuss about the weekly test schedule and tentative date sheet of examination for grade 12. There are two cycles of weekly tests scheduled for grade 12 students. The first cycle of weekly tests will be conducted between 3rd April and 15th May. This will be followed by first term theory and practical examination that will commence from 22nd May. The second cycle of weekly tests will be conducted between 4th September and 2nd October. This will be followed by half yearly examination in October, first pre board examination in December, CBSE pra practical exam in January, second pre board examination in February, followed by CBSE theory exam that will begin from the last week of February. Next, I will quickly take you through the timeline of examination to be conducted for grade 12 2023-24. First term theory examination will be conducted between 22nd May and 1st June 2023. First term practical examination will be conducted from 4th June to 8th June. First term general studies examination will be conducted on 5th June. Half yearly examination will be conducted between 12th October and 25th October. First pre board examination will be conducted from 7th December to 21st December. It's conducted from 4th January to 16th January 2024. Annual general studies examination will be conducted on 27th November 2023. Second pre board examination will be conducted between 5th of February and 18th February. CBSE board examination will be conducted in the month of February, March and April 2024. Next, we will quickly look into the important information for examination of grade 12. The points are very similar to that of grade 11, which was well explained by Ms. Kakoli. You could kindly look into the slides here. I would just like to add on one more point. Students found using unfair means 
during any examination will be marked zero for that subject. There will be no replacement of answer sheet for such students. They will not be eligible for any academic award or school appointments. Moving on to the next slide, you can have a look at this slide. I just, uh, you can just have a look at this slide. I just want to add one point here. Of late, we have observed that students have the tendency to remain absent a day before the weekly test. This may reap a small benefit of slight improvement in the weekly test marks. However, students, it may not be beneficial in the long run as you will be missing out on the invaluable day's learning. So I would instead tell you, you should plan properly and prepare throughout the week for the test. Many students in the past have made us proud with their exemplary performance. We DPS family never waste an opportunity to reward their hard work. Various awards are given to the students on meeting the criteria that is listed on the slide. Scholar badge is awarded to the student of grade 12 who secures 90% in a minimum of 4 subjects and 80% in the 5th. Proficiency award is bestowed to top rank holder in science, commerce and humanities stream respectively in AISSC examination. Furthermore, Students getting 100% marks in any subject, as well as receiving, uh, as as well as the ones scoring highest mark in a subject, are also awarded with proficiency award. The other awards conferred to the students are blue blazer, blue tie, silver medal, gold medal, special award, 100% attendance award, best all-rounder student. I hope. We will get an opportunity to honor many of our grade 12 students with these awards in future. I would like to conclude by saying, dear students, routine is directly proportional to result. If you set a proper routine and follow it, good result is inevitable. Now, I would like to call upon Ms. Jolly Sabu, academic counselor for further proceedings. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning, one and all. I walk you through the college application process. In this segment, I will be covering timeline for college preparation, application for support documents from school, college admission requirements, standardized tests, calculation of predicted scores, transcripts, recommendation letters, how many colleges should you apply to, deadlines and how to write a personal statement or an essay. College preparation is ingrained in the essence of education, the ability to learn, the desire to explore, the persistence to grow, the determination to focus and the motivation to apply. Now if you see, each of these fundamentals symbolizes a stepping stone on the college timeline and it's important to understand what takes place at each point of time. The middle school. The middle school is all about learning. You absorb all the knowledge and enrich your mind uh, academically and uh, socially while developing the skills and study habits that will prepare you for the high school, college and beyond. The ninth grade is about meeting your school counsellor, exploring the newfound opportunities and don't be afraid to challenge yourself or try something new. Tenth grade is about knowing your strengths and getting ready to blossom but it's up to you to sustain your growth by developing new skills and maintaining involvement in the activities. 11th grade characterizes focus. Focus on your grades, focus on your entrance exams, focus on your college search and of course focus on yourself, the activities you enjoy, the interests you want to pursue. 12th grade is known as the year for applying to the colleges but it's so much more than that. It's also the year of applying your knowledge and interest to solidify your future. The emphasis is placed on submitting the forms to a variety of schools. But what you're really doing is actually show, showcasing all that you have accomplished 
all through these years and all that makes you. Now, the school supports this cause and helps the students to land up in their dream colleges. So, there is a lot of groundwork that has to be done and for that, uh, how, how to get started, there is a this. Go to the download center and the form is application for support document. Download that form, fill it and along with the required uh, documents, attachments, submit it at the reception and which will be taken care of. Note, the processing time for the request made for support documents will take a minimum of two working weeks. Application to be preferably submitted before the summer break so that the teachers get enough time to prepare the recommendation letters. Any other specific requirements of the university not mentioned in the form should be forwarded to the, principal, to the principal with a formal application by the student attaching the university's email. WhatsApp messages are strictly discouraged for official communication. Now, the requirements for colleges in India. Entrance exams like SAT, JE, NEET, CLAT. No recommendations of predictive scores are required there, but class 10 and 12 CBSC board mark list is a must. If it is a private institution, then you may require documents as their respective as per their respective demands, like a bona fide certificate or a pre-board mark sheet or um, uh, uh, or the uh, attested copy of your class 10th and 12th report cards. What are the requirements for the foreign universities? You require transcripts from classes 9, 10, 11, 12, first term. Predicted scores, recommendation letters from the academic counsellor, recommendation letter from any of the two subject teachers, proof of your voluntary services, proof of extracurricular activities involving like sports, MUNs, debates, proof of leadership positions held, standardized test scores, portfolios for courses like architecture, product designing and fine arts, proof of supporting financial statements which is uh, to be provided by your father. Okay. Personal statements, then admission forms to be filled and documents to be sent to the school by the academic counsellor. Now, the standardized test to be taken for foreign universities, SAT and or ACT. English proficiency tests like TOEFL, IELTS. For medicine, courses like medicine, you have to take tests like MCAT, UKCAT, BMAT, GAMSAT, depending upon the universities you are applying. Now, how do we calculate the predicted scores? Now, this table shows three columns. The first column is the range of marks which the student has actually obtained in his exams. Supposing in the first uh, row you see, if the student has scored 75 marks, the school provides an added 20 marks to it and in the last column, what comes is 95 that comes in your predicted scores okay so it goes on like that so if 75 to 80 already you get a 20 added to it that is 95 plus one additional mark for the next range you are falling into so it goes on till 100 the note there is generally this predicted marks is calculated under first term marks it can be provided if you request it on the basis of any of these exams. It can be half yearly, pre-board, if specifically requested. One. But once it is provided, you will not be changing it. It is calculated as, as I told you in the previous slide, it is calculated plus 20 of the actual marks obtained. Now, this is what a transcript is. Transcript is nothing but the report card that you have. Also mentioned that they can't ask for a mix and match of ah, yes. marks from yes. this. Ah. I did well in this exam. Yes. I did well there. I understand. And only once it will be once it. See, uh, going to the previous slide, what Ma'am wants to add is that if when we calculate this predicted score, you should choose only one exam. You sh there is a choice. If you do not choose, we take first term as. Only one set will be. You should not think that if I scored less in one subject here and more in there, we cannot have a permutation and combination done. Got it? Children, have you understood what it is? Yes, yes. Many of you come back saying, I did well in maths in the first term, take that mark. I did well in sciences, physics in the second term, take that. This, the predicted scores are a set based on one set of question papers, okay, and one set of examinations. So in the past, many 
students come back saying, why it's my mark only. It's your marks, but it's not from one set, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is how a transcript, what is a transcript? A transcript is nothing but the report card that you have got from classes 9 to 12, but in a different format. We provide it on a school letterhead with this which will also include the topics that you learned in the uh, subject, in the respective subject with the number of hours covered, which will give you a credit in the university. Now the recommendation letters, we provide three recommendation letters, one from the academic counsellor and two from the subject teachers. Any of the two subjects, the subject teachers which you are choosing should be related to the course that you are applying for. So, an academic counsellor provides recommendation letter which includes the student's academic and co-curricular achievements, character traits, leadership qualities, voluntary services, internships, etc. Whereas, the subject teacher focuses on the subject strength of the student in her letter. So, you should be careful when you choose your subject teacher. Now, this slide talks about the how to write a personal statement or an essay. A personal statement is something with, where, where you introduce yourself to the universities. So by reading your essay, they, uh, you actually this is already uploaded in the school portal, you can follow it up there. Now how many colleges should you apply to? I would say that the number is up to you, but you will have to divide it into three categories, safety schools, reasonable schools and reach schools. Safety schools are those schools which you are sure to get in. Reasonable schools, you have 50-50 chances. Re uh, reach schools are your dream schools. So apply to such uh, colleges which falls into all the three categories. Now, these are certain websites where you can check for the accreditation of the program that you are choosing. So, this is also uploaded in the school portal. Go and check. Once you choose your course and the university to know its authenticity, go and visit these websites. Now, what are the deadlines? The deadlines, if you are applying to the US where majority of our school students apply to, the earliest deadline is November 1st or November 15th. The regular decision is uh, January 1st or February 1st. Rolling admission is May 1st. If you are applying to UK, the deadlines for most, uh, the first deadline is 15th October and that is all for, uh, for the students who opt for medicine. Uh, and uh, for the majority of the other courses, it is 15th January. And from for some art and other designing courses, it is uh, 24th March. Now for uh, if you are opting for uh, universities in Qatar, Canada, Singapore, Malaysia, Germany, Netherlands and the MENA countries, the deadlines vary. It depends upon the universities and the countries. Okay, So you will have to particularly go to their website and find out what is their deadline. If you have any more doubts, you can always reach out to me uh, in my staff room. Okay? Now may I call? Um, Mr. Joe Thomas for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, one and all. My role is to give you some details about CBSC registration, CBSC battery exam, and CBSC examination. We'll start with class 11 registration. You see a part of the CBC registration form meant for the 2025 examination. This form looks like any other form, but there's a big difference. If you make an error in the entry of the candidate's name, or father's name, or mother's name, that will be reflected in your class 12 mark sheet and in your pass certificate. You have to enter the subject level combinations. You have to mention whether you belong to a CST category, then the subjects and details about your board examination, your roll number, year of passing. And when you fill your registration form, you should be very careful. The name of the student and parent should be written as they appear on the class 10 CBSC certificate, your class 10 pass certificate. And subjects cannot be changed once the registration is there. 
usually we finalize it in September. So after that, if you request for any change in the subject, it cannot be there. Doesn't mean that if you come in August, the subjects can be changed. You know the school policy. Relevant documents are to be submitted by SEST students and also OBC category students. So certificates from competent authority must be submitted to consider you as SEST or OBC students. Children with special needs can avail extra time and other facility concerns like use of calculator and all. But the CBS is very strict regarding that. Uh, students are paying for special, you know, and the special education need category should provide a certificate showing the percentage of disability. This you can get from India or from doctors in hospitals in uh, Qatar. But it should be mentioned very clearly that you have 45% or more disability. It should be very clearly specified. The number should be specified by the doctor, by the competent authority. The checklist generator after online submission of the data will be sent home for the verification. Both parent and student should verify the data before the student signs the document. For class level, only the student signs the document, but parents and um, uh, students are requested to uh, cost, uh, check the data before confirmation. Once the registration data is finalized, no correction can be done from our end. For class for students, examination registrations will be done in the month of September. Your class teachers will send you the consent data. Your parents will be requested to uh, post the data. And registration data of class 11 will be carried forward to class 12. Change of subject cannot be done at this point. In case of any correction, the spelling of the name or of the candidate or the parent, we can make the changes before the final submission happens. You'll be given a deadline to submit the request for changes. You have to send the request with supporting documents. And regarding practical examination, it will be scheduled as per the CBSC calendar. Practical examination dates will be uploaded to the CBSC as per the CBSC scheduling our school website. Once examination date is published, no request for change of date can be entertained. Some days, principal member receives letters asking for the change of board examination even. So please, please note that this is not under our control. When admin card is issued, uh, usually you may uh, get the admin card in the last week of Dan or the first week of February. Check the information on it suddenly. Uh, please note that date of birth is not reflected on the admin card or any other class of uh, documents, even on your pass certificate. Uh, date of birth will be reflected. And start time of the examination shown on the admit card and for the promise to change it, but in the last uh, the 2023 exam also, they are, they are giving engaged standard time. Uh, two years before one came, uh, one student came here uh, after 10 o'clock, thinking that the exam starts at 10.15. Here the writing starts at you know 8 o'clock and the students have to report uh, by 6.45. Keep in mind that the uh, time shown on the admin card is Indian standard time, not Qatar time. A school transport is not available to the center during the examination days. When you get your admit card, you will come to know which center will be taking the examination. But the school will not arrange any um, you know, transport uh, and you know, the drop and pickup should be arranged by the parent. Students should not resort to any kind of unfair means during examination. So my colleague said if you are caught but it's not, CBS is not like that. If you are found with any means which could be used for unfair means, then you are uh, you know, caught and they will penalize you. You might lose one or a year or two years uh, according to the seriousness of the, um, uh, of the unfair means we are trying to resort to and it's as per the decision of the CBSC board. And I would like to add uh, just one more thing regarding the percentile. When the results are out, we get many calls from parents saying that my son got 96 marks in a certain subject and his grade is appearing as A2. Or sometimes we get that, you know, oh, my son for, um, you know, scored 93, but the date shown as a B1. So there's a mistake. Please understand that percentage and percentile are not the same. You know how percentage is can, uh, you know, calculated. That's your score percentage. If you get 95, then the percentage is 95, but percentile is are uh, you know calculated based on your performance, the overall performance of not your performance, based on the overall performance of the students in the whole examination uh, under uh, CBSC board. Uh, you know that around 2.5 million students uh, take board and examination, and more than 1.25 million students take the class one examination. The top 12.5 percentage of students, and one eighth of the top, or uh, you know, past candidates, past candidates will be given A1. That means if the examination is tough. 
and the overall performance is low, even at 18 can be an A1, even 90 can be an A1. But if the examination, if the paper is easy and students score well, even 93 or 94 can be A2 or B1. I think you've got the difference between percentage and percentile. That's all from my end. Now I request Ms. P.D. Modi to continue with the topic. Thank you, Joseph. Once again, good morning to one and all. I'll be focusing on co-curricular activities which are conducted in DPS Modern Indian School. The goal of DPS Modern Indian School is to provide holistic education by balancing academics with extracurricular activities. Our school provides plenty of opportunities for students to take up leadership roles and show off their talents through various programs which are conducted by students under the able guidance of teachers. Through such activities, students are able to discover that they can actually be productive and successful in many other ways outside the classroom. Right now, many of you might have applied for this student council post, various posts and selection process is going on. Let me just clear to you all that selection in student council positions is based on demonstrated leadership qualities, writing skills, curricular records, teachers rating, group discussions and personal interviews with the selection committee of teachers headed by principal, vice principals, academic coordinator, activity coordinators and many other teachers. For class 11 student council positions, no interviews are conducted. The selection is based on demonstrated leadership quality, writing skill, curricular records, teachers rating. Regarding club activities, school clubs, they create small community. They attract people who share the same interests such as in dance, art, music and many more. For senior school student that is from grade 9 to 12 in our school, we have 30 different clubs where student can register themselves and get associated with the club activities throughout the year. Club activities help the students to develop the sense of unity and teamwork, learning how to work with others in reaching the same goals. Let me make it clear that one student can register for one club in a particular academic session. Common registration form is uploaded on the school website to become a member of a particular club. The last date for registration for a clubs is 15th of May. Active and exemplary club members are appreciated at the end of the year. Moving on to the next, that is a rendezvous. We conduct rendezvous twice a year, that is in term one and term two, under two categories, that is cultural rendezvous and sports rendezvous. Cultural rendezvous in term one includes off-stage events, and term 2 includes off-stage as well as on-stage events. Competitions and teams for cultural rendezvous are proposed by student council members and if they are the, if the heads of the school they find it appropriate then they, it is approved. For sports rendezvous, term 1 includes indoor sports. In rendezvous, students from four different houses compete with each other. The syllabus in CBSC school and especially our school is designed and planned to make learning less stressful for the students without compromising quality. Keeping this in mind, our school has created various programs such as TEDx Youth at DPSMIS inter-school DPS MUN conference, inter-school debate uh, competition which is organized by debate club. Next, moving on to farewell. Farewell for outgoing batch of class 12. It is organized by class 11 student under the guidance of teachers. School organizes this farewell inside the school campus. No parties are arranged outside by the school. 
and let me make it very clear no contribution is collected from grade 11 as well as grade 12 students for farewell it's all everything is managed by the management only uh, now let me introduce you all to the key functionaries and teacher in charges for various activities for grade 9 to 12. As you all know, pillar of uh, support and strength are principal Ms. Asna Nafis, vice principal for senior secondary school and head of activities for 6 to 12 is Ms. Soma Bhattacharyji. Academic coordinator for grade 11 and 12 is Dr. Rakhi Mishra and myself Preeti Modi is activity coordinator for grade 9 to 12. Class representatives for grade 12 Mr. Siddharth Shreshta and Mr. Dinu for grade 11 Ms. Bina Hasina and Ms. Kakoli Biswas. House wardens. Lily House Warden is Miss Nia Jacob. Miss Aditi Srivasta is a Lotus House Warden for grade 9 to 12. Mr. Vargis Joseph, Justin Sir, is a House Warden for Rose House for grade 9 to 12. And Miss Shell Jen is a House Warden for Tulip House for grade 9 to 12 for the academic session. 2023-24. Miss Jolly Sabu, she is a career and admissions counselor for grade 9 to 11 and 12. And Dr. Deepika, she is also supporting her in uh, this career and admissions counselor for grade 11 and 12. Miss Ashraf Sultana, she is a CBSE coordinator for grade 9 and 10. And Mr. Jose. Thomas is a CBSE coordinator for grade 11 and 12. Now I will introduce you to all club in, uh, teacher in charges for various clubs. Mr. Avishek Jha, he is a teacher in charge for robotics and computer club for grade 9 to 12. Ms. Shakuntala, she is a teacher in charge for mathematics club for grade 9 to 12. Mr. Jay Krishnan Vijay Kumar. He is a, a teacher in charge for quiz club for grade from grade 9 to 12. Miss Anju, she is a teacher in charge for science club for grade 9 to 12. Miss Farzana Saif, she is a teacher in charge for environment club from grade 9 to 12. Miss Shalu Gumbar, she is a teacher in charge for commerce and entrepreneurship club for grade 9 to 12. Mr. Amit Kumar Chakraborty is a teacher in charge for art club from grade 9 to 12. And Mr. Amit Majumdar is a teacher in charge for photography club for grade 9 to 12. Ms. Jaya Majumdar, she is a teacher in charge for debate and entrepreneurship club for grade 9 to 12. And Ms. Jolly Sabu, she is a teacher in charge for MUN club for grade 9 to 12. Ms. Parvati Gopalakrishnan, she is a teacher in charge for publication club for grade 9 to 12. For music club, teacher in charge is Mumpy Day and for dance club, it's uh, Ms. Manha Alisha. With this, we come to the end of this program. Before I sign off, let me take this opportunity to th thank our beloved principal, Ms. Asna Nafis, for her unwavering support. I thank Before I propose a vote of thanks, I will request principal ma'am to share her thoughts on this occasion.
morning children first up i would like to put on record that you have behaved yourself so well it's amazing to see the auditorium full but children listening so you need a big round of applause for yourself i think the one year that you have been at school post covid has made a big difference you have calmed down settled down your energies are kind of normalized and you're focusing on what's happening at school so well done children there were just a few observations one i did mention with regard to the selection of marks for the projected scores the other is that it's an observation from uh, our experience that children tend to bring a standard written document as the recommendation letter and they expect teachers to sign it off a recommendation letter is the observation of the school authorities and your teacher it is not your choice or your words that can be taken up parents give it out to some consultant some consultant will write one big english jargon fill it up with all sweet things there's nothing wrong with the child ever because they're being paid to write those consultation letters so recommendation letters teachers also should be very careful when children pass something into your hand and expect them to just duplicate that and sign it off it's wrong on the part of the teacher also to do something like that you have to be observant of the children you should know what are their strengths and their weaknesses because a very good feedback which is both encouraging as well as supporting them to improve is important for a child because only feedback will help a child to improve writing or fudging up a report with lovely lovely words all nice things all uh, the students in this auditorium are excellent students it doesn't work that way we are doing injustice to the ones who are really very good and we are doing injustice to the ones who require improvement so we all need to be cautious when we are giving recommendation letters they should reflect the reality we all believe the children will change we will write them when we write the recommendation letters that when given feedback the child took it positively and changed there's nothing wrong in it it is positive so let's be careful on that don't get recommendation standard recommendation letters and give it to your teachers and sign it off this is what i want then some parents write back saying we are not satisfied with the recommendation letter a recommendation letter is given as an ancillary activity of the school it's not the core activity of a school it's something that the school decides whether to give or not to give i can even choose not to give a recommendation letter if i'm not happy i don't feel satisfied with the student i can just point blank say sorry i don't want to give a recommendation letter because i'm sending you to an educational institution which is the higher education institution where the name of and reputation of our school is very important it's not about one individual child but children who will be going batch after batch to that institution from our school and who have already gone i'm sure you are aware that we have alma mater everywhere starting from harvards to ale to princeton to all universities we have our students kings college um london school of economics you name it and we are there bell cornell carnegie mellon oxford oxford texas a&m we have them over there so we don't want you to go and spoil the reputation of the institution so we will choose whether to give the recommendation letter or not give the recommendation letter it's not your birth right that's what people think when they come innocently they walk up and they tell that i deserve better than this but to deserve better than this there's a there's only a simple way you work very hard through the academic year you conduct yourself well because recommendation letters are not about your academic performance they're more about your personality your attitude your willingness to change your adaptability your flexibility your willingness to take advice to follow schools code of conduct basic ethics morality it's based on that so you have the entire year to improve on all those things so that you get a good recommendation letter the other thing is with regard to the various activities uh one of the thing that i feel that our school does is the cluster events so what happens is during the cluster events children try you know their best to participate just for the sake of participating to avoid attending classes so put, pick and choose what you are good at 
and balanced academic as well as sports and activities. All of these things are required. And from our observations from the last academic year's question papers, the CBSE is definitely moving towards NEP. It's basing its question papers on competency rather than just knowledge. So if you're a child who's learning by heart everything and reproducing it, you need to change your way. You need to look at understanding concepts and applying those concepts. And there could be multiple concepts that are being tested in one question. From our general analysis of the question papers, we feel at least 10 to 15 percentage of the question paper was for real high achievers who understood concepts, who just did not you know, learn by heart at the nth moment. You all need to work right from the very beginning. Don't start studying one month before the board examinations. That also gets you results. I'm not saying no. But when you start studying from now, listen to your teachers, focus on the activities being done inside the class. Better and be more relaxed without that uh, taboo word of, you know, I am under stress, I'm anxious, I'm depressed. I can't face the examination. You will not go through all those things. You'll be fully prepared for your examinations, even if you study very basic every day. Plan it on a daily basis and study. And all those who are going for tuitions, work for I know tuitions teach you something else, school teaches you something else, and you're riding on two boats and you land no way. So be careful, focus on any one of these. You need the school because you need the CBSC certificate from the school. So focus.